Hello again, I'm Sophie and today I'm going to show you how to create a paper cut effect in Affinity Designer. I'll start by explaining how the basic principle works so that you can create a picture like this. After that, I'll also show you some tricks on how to make it look more realistic. First of all, you have to create a new document. After that, you start by adding some rectangles that cover your whole canvas. For my example, I'm going to use five, but you can use however many you like. You can create those rectangles either by placing all of them with the rectangle tool or by duplicating the first one. After you created all these rectangles, you want to color them. You can simply change the color of the rectangle by selecting it and then changing the fill color. Make sure that the outline width is set to none or to zero points. I'm going for a transition from light to dark blue for which I already created a color palette. After you are done with coloring the rectangles, the paper cutting begins. This can be done in multiple ways. I'll show you some of them so that you can choose your favorite one. The first one is to use the pencil tool and draw a shape with that. When you are done with this, you have to choose the node tool and click on close so that you have one continuous curve. After I close the curve, I like to delete one of the nodes which was used to close the curve and change the other one to be a smooth node. This results in a nicer curve in my opinion. You can play around with the nodes a bit until you are happy with the result. You then go to the layers menu and select both the curve and the first rectangle layer. After that, you go to the three dots menu and click on subtract. As you can see, the shape of the curve got subtracted from the first rectangle and you can see the color of the rectangle underneath it. This process can be repeated as often as you like. You can either cut more shapes into the first rectangle or add some to the second rectangle and so on. You can also use the pen tool to create those curves that you use to cut into the rectangle. For that, choose pen as a mode and then create some smooth nodes by pressing the pen down and then pulling in the direction you want. After you are done with the curve, you put that layer on top of the second rectangle layer, select them both, and then choose subtract inside of the three dots menu again. You can also change the curve after you have subtracted it from the rectangle if you're not happy with the result. Another way to create this curve is to use the pen tool, but in the smart mode. This results in quite some nice and curved lines. After you have created the curve, it is basically again the same procedure. Selecting both the rectangle and the curve, then going to the three dots menu and then clicking on subtract. After you are done cutting inside the rectangles, you already have quite an interesting picture. But here the dimension is kind of missing. To change that, you can add some shadow effects. To do so, select the first rectangle and then go to the layer FX menu. Here you click on the outer shadow menu. You can play around with the settings inside the outer shadow menu a bit until it looks realistic. After you are happy with this effect, you want to apply the same effect on all the other rectangle layers. One way to do this is to go to the three dots menu where you still have the first rectangle selected and then click on copy. Then you select the second rectangle, go back to the three dots menu and click on paste FX. As you can see, the shadow effect is now also applied to the second layer. Repeat this until you have the shadow effect on all your layers. This already looks somewhat realistic and like a paper cut effect. To make it look even more realistic, there are some things that you can do. The first one is to add a paper structure to the different layers. To do that, I looked for a picture with paper structure that I liked and saved it as an asset. I can then easily use it in different projects, but you can also just import it as a picture. After inserting it, you want to change the color of it. This can be done by going into the adjustments menu and clicking on recolor. You can play around with the hue, saturation and brightness until you have the color that you want. When you are done with that, you want to go to the layers menu and drag the recolor adjustment layer into the picture layer with the paper structure. After that, you take this and drag it into the last rectangle layer. As you can see, it has been snipped inside the rectangle layer. When you zoom in a bit more, you can see the structure of the paper. Using the same method, you can add the paper structure to the other rectangle layers as well. One trick 
that you can use to do this faster is to duplicate the paper structure layer and then adjusting the color of it. You then again drag it inside the rectangle layer you want. Once you are done adding the paper structure to every layer, there's one additional thing that can be done to make it look more realistic. To do that, you again select the first layer and then go to the layer FX menu. This time you choose the inner shadow option. As before, you can play around with the settings in this effect to make it look realistic. I'm always choosing a very light color. This can easily be done by taking the color I'm working on right now as a reference and increasing the luminance. In addition to changing the color, I'm always setting the blend mode to overlay. The other settings, so the opacity, the radius and the offset can be adjusted so that it fits to the project you're working on. After you are happy with this effect, you can copy it again to the other layers as shown before. As you can see, this results in quite a realistic looking paper cut effect. Using the same techniques, you can also create some more complex paper cut effects as you can see here. I hope this video was helpful and see you soon.